to it. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your virtual hands together and welcome our old friend and New Jersey sustainability royalty, Sir Randy Solomon. So <laughs> Randy, tell us what's new with sustainable Jersey. Uh, that was funny. Um, please don't ever call me Sir Randy Solomon. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. And I just want to say, wow, what a great turnout you have here. Um, amazing, amazing group. So um, what's happening with Sustainable Jersey? And yeah, so I'll talk about um, kind of big picture with Sustainable Jersey and sustainability in the state. Um, and I'll also talk about food waste and what we're doing, because it's a really important, vexing problem. Um, and I look forward to hearing from all of you and, and having some discussion about it, because Sustainable Jersey does not have all the answers. We try to have some answers, but the way we make progress is by talking and dialogue and, and sharing sharing examples and, and knowledge. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's something that some of you are doing that we're not aware of that we would love to promote and highlight and could learn from. Um, and so look forward to hearing some from you. So um, Sustainable Jersey is doing very well. Um, we're having, you know, as you can imagine, after COVID, we had a couple of years of um sort of subdued activity, lower numbers in terms of the certification program. And then in, in the last year, we had a, you know, the second highest rate of applications for the municipal program and rate of, you know, uh, certifications and the number of municipalities that are implementing sustainability actions that we, we've ever had. So it's sort of pent up demand and everything came roaring back. Uh, and now things have, have even the pendulum has swung so far because we, you know, the whole world was shut down after COVID. And what typically happens when there's a major natural disaster or an economic depression or something crazy happens is that the government responds with stimulus. You know, it's sort of classic Keynesian counter cyclical spending, um, Keynesian economics, where the economy needs a jolt. And so the government, uh, you know, appropriates a lot of money and it's just falling down to everything. So there's a lot of money that more than I've ever seen in my lifetime uh, for all kinds of sustainability initiatives and initiatives that folks like us really want to see happen. Um, and so it's flowing from the federal government in terms of grants and formula grants that are going down to states and municipalities and counties and schools. And so now all of a sudden we're seeing all the local government capacity in the country taken up with just responding to federal RFPs and grants. And so we're trying to figure out what's our role in helping local governments respond because their capacity has not grown. It's still the same, you know, same business administrator, same, you know, green team members. Um, but now with, you know, essentially a historic opportunity to have resources, uh, you know, from a friendly administration, both at the state and the federal level, to our issues, um, uh, you know, to do stuff. And but how do we do stuff? And how do we how do we take advantage of it? So, um, we have been steadily shifting our focus uh, from, and maybe it's not shifting, maybe it's more expanding, but you know, expanding our focus in terms of providing direct help and direct technical assistance to to municipalities and schools, actually helping them fill out grant applications, uh, do the do the grunt work that needs to get done to be able to um, deal with energy efficiency. We have a major new um, uh, partnership with PSEG, who has been charged with and and uh, who's been charged with um, with the other state uh, other public utilities has been charged by the state from the Clean Energy Act of 2018 with being the frontline implementers of a lot of the clean energy programs. And so a lot of the, most of the residential programs, the ones that we can do in our homes, um, as well as the ones for small businesses are run by the public utilities now. Uh, but for the most part there, you know, the whereas we need to get hundred percent of people making their homes more energy efficient, small businesses making their home, their businesses more energy efficient. We're only at about like 5%. Um, so we're trying to get municipalities to play a role in helping people understand those programs, trust those programs, because it's really hard to get regular people to trust, you know, when they just get random mail from somebody saying there's this great program. Um, so we're helping municipalities run outreach campaigns um, and uh, 
uh, also working with um, um, Patrick McDevitt and South Jersey Industries as well uh, to, to support municipalities in taking a role and helping people take advantage of these, you know, these lucrative sources of funding to, to do sustainability stuff in their, in their lives. Um, so we've been doing a lot of that. Um, we're, we also have big initiatives in climate change education in schools. Um, New Jersey became the first and still the only state to mandate climate change education in all grade bands, K through 12, as well as in most subject areas. Um, and we have technical assistance programs for sort of complete streets, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, and uh, uh, dealing with diversity and equity in municipalities, sort of how to, how to engage diverse populations into public decision-making and making sure that they're, um, you know, they have equal, that, that local government um, understands who they are and is thinking about how they consume information and how to make, again, decision-making processes more accessible to them. Um, and so we have a sort of a coaches program and a pilot program for that, um, dealing with water, kind of like all the big issues. So we're, we're as busy as ever, um, but more and more we're, you know, we're focused on, you know, not just judging what you've done through the certification program, but trying to provide help through grants, technical assistance and, and support. Um, so that's big, big picture what's going on with Sustainable Jersey. Um, in terms of food waste, um, I'd say that's also been a renewed focus, uh, both on the municipal side and on the school side. I think many people Randy, I think you froze on us. Uh, am I back? All right. I yes, you are. Again. Sorry. I don't know how long I froze. I was on a roll. Um, so, <laughs> just a couple uh, seconds. Okay, just a couple seconds. So, uh, or, or not a lot, but a, but a handful have tried to do curbside food waste pickup, um, and it wasn't economical because there was no place in, in New Jersey that could get a permit from the state to actually manage food waste and to, to treat it. And so they it had to be shipped out of state and the costs were so absorb, absorbent, exorbitant that no municipality could really sustain it. Uh, but that state law has changed and we're, we're hoping that there will be a number of regional food waste processing facilities. There's also rules that basically say if a municipality or a school, and I think it's even more relevant for schools, but like in a community garden, for example, you wanted to allow people to bring food waste and compost it there in your community garden, um, you would have to get a permit for that community garden as if you were a commercial food waste disposal outfit. And it would be, it, the, the paperwork you'd have to go through would makes it such that you would just never do that. And that's why that's not, um, that's not a thing. But there's a lot of folks that are pushing for changes. There's a coalition of people on the chair of the Sustainable Jersey Board, who many of you know, Gary Sondemeyer, is on the front, works for Bayshore Recycling. He's on the front line of trying to push for change in a lot of the state laws that will sort of loosen it up and take some of the handcuffs off of municipalities and schools in terms of trying to deal with food waste and sort of just make the whole food system more sustainable. Um, but even within the current framework, and then partially also anticipating hopefully new frameworks, there's a lot of stuff in sustainable Jersey that deals with all the big aspects of food. And and I just want to, you know, some context, food is absolutely like the, the mega issue in sustainability. Um, you know, people often ask me to define sustainability, and I usually go right to food. It's like sustainability means we're going to have food, like 10 years, 20 years. We're not going to be fighting each other with assault weapons for grubs and for access to farmland and food, like, like no food, no civilization, no, no nothing. And we take it for granted. Like in, in New Jersey, the basis of our economy is mostly like typing on keyboards and shuffling papers and talking on the phone. It's not like digging in the dirt and growing stuff, right? And people around the world send us their like tangible goods, their food in exchange for us typing on our keyboards and talking on the phone. And that's not everybody. You know, there's a lot of people in New Jersey that do that farm. There's a lot of people that, you know, provide healthcare or whatever. 
but the basis, like all, all, a lot of that is really service economy that's around a foundation of sort of white collar industries. Um, and we don't make enough food locally to support ourselves. If for some reason, the rest of the world decided they no longer wanted, you know, this in exchange for actual food, we would be in a lot of trouble. Um, we'd be in a lot of trouble in New Jersey. We'd be a lot of trouble in this region. Um, so for, you know, when we think about food, you know, there's, there's, we have to think about the sustainability consequences of all the phases of it. So, you know, the making of it, the eating of it, like what happened, you know, what do we eat? Um, what is it? What, you know, is it healthy? Who gets it? Who doesn't get it? Um, and then disposing of it. So how much do we waste? And then what happens to all that really wonderful, you know, um, essentially, uh, extremely expensive, nutrient-rich, energy-rich stuff that came to, you know, came into our homes, came into our schools, um, and, um, you know, through this incredibly extensive and expensive chain that, you know, started somewhere else for the most part, and then through the expense of a lot of fossil fuels and a lot of natural resources and a lot of perfect people power and a lot of, you know, trucks and uh, you know, came to us. Um, and then we, you know, we waste like 30, 30, 40% of it. Um, so in sustainable Jersey, we're thinking about, you know, what, what can we do locally? Because we can't affect every part of this system locally, but there are some things that we can do. Um, and as always, we're always open to your ideas about what municipalities and schools, what role they can play. Um, but let me start in schools, because I think schools have a huge outsized impact Schools are where um, schools are where Americans go to learn that food is not important. So, you know, every everyone here probably went to a school where they went to a cafeteria, and at that cafeteria, you know, food was like slopped onto a tray, um, and it was given to you, and uh, after you didn't eat most of it, and then most of it just went into the trash, and it was very sort of industrial. The food wasn't special, it wasn't thoughtful, it wasn't sustainable, um, and there was not a lot of teaching. Uh, I, mean, I remember with my friends, we used to like make piles in the mashed potatoes and have food fights and just, you know, and then we'd drink a thing of chocolate milk and that's what we'd actually eat was the, you know, something sweet. Um, so food, you know, cafe school cafeterias have an outsized impact, not just because a significant chunk of the population eats in those cafeterias every single day, but it's where attitudes and habits about food get set that carry us through for the rest of our lives, where food is just the stuff that gets slopped onto a tray and dumped into a garbage can and we don't really think about it. So we think school cafeterias are an important place to make an intervention. And so we have a new slate of actions that are coming out, essentially a toolkit to help schools think about food waste. Uh, and it deals with, you know, starting with a, a food waste audit and has different points, different sort of tiers within the action for dealing with your food service um, and your, your you know, cafeteria and your contracts and your cafeteria workers. Also dealing with diversion. Um, so like share tables and how do you sort of prevent it from getting wasted in education. Um, and then another component of it that's dealing with composting, um, having on-site composters or just a garden where you've got, um, you know, on, when I say on-site composter, I mean like uh, like a, a rocket composter or some other machine that like can really process it. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. It can also just be in the garden, you know, where you have a, a more traditional composter. Um, so we want, we want schools to really think about food and food waste um, and to not waste as much. Uh, and, and a big part of that though starts with what you serve as well. So serving things that students want, being more attuned to what they want and, um, and then teaching them that the food is valuable. So instead of just throwing it out, putting, you know, putting stuff that can can be saved onto a share table so it can be taken by other students or retrieved um, and sent to food pantries and food banks. Um, and then again, separating out the food waste from other trash so that it can be composted. Um, Great. Good. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just jumping. I mean, I, I could listen to this all day. Uh, I think you know we're going to have a, a lot of wonderful speakers on 
on food waste and composting. And this was a fabulous overview of everything that is going on in New Jersey. And you've given us a, a lot to think about. Um, if it's okay with you, I'm going to bring in Sandy and, and Britt um, to the conversation. And there's a few audience questions. Um, so Sandy, maybe if you could get us started. And, and thanks for cutting me off. I could have gone for a long time too. So I was not watching the clock. <laughs> well, you know, I, I could hear it. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of us are fascinated by all of these updates. And Sandy, you're on mute still. Sorry about that. I thought I clicked it. So thank yeah. you, Lisa. And thank you, Randy, for that great presentation. Um, my name's Sandy. I'm from Sustainable Collingswood. And as many of you may know, uh, we are a dining destination. Um, so I was wondering, Randy, if you could point to, you know, we have dozens and dozens of restaurants and um, we had a false start about 10 years ago on trying to create a composting program between the restaurants. I was wondering if you could point to any successful cities who have a cooperative um, restaurant composting program that we could look into and, and mimic because we are look, wanting to explore that again. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I really don't know of any off the top of my head. I mean, I think most of the experiments that I've seen have mostly failed because, again, lack of a good place to send the you know the the, the compostable material. Uh, but I don't, you know what? I don't want to say that there aren't because I, I haven't really looked recently. Okay. So I, I wish I had a better answer for you. That's okay. I guess my second part of that question would be: Do you know? Do you have any sense of like what? when we could expect some of these regional compost facilities to be developed and in operation? Um, I really don't know that either. Um, you know, I think the, uh, but you know, I, I can find out because the, the person I really talked to is Gary Sondermeyer, okay. our board chair. And so I, I don't know if, if they're, you know, I assume, um, I assume I could send you all information. Like if I if I dig some uh, some answers up, I can get it out to everybody. So I, I'll do that. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again for the presentation. Yeah, because because the, the legislation I think does have um, um, a lot of limitations, and so it's it's a nuanced answer. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Randy. Um, and hi, Brittany Byer here uh, from the Barrington Green Team in Camden County. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, you mentioned you had a surge in municipalities applying for certification last year, which is wonderful to hear. Um, our town started our journey with Sustainable Jersey last year, and we have a wonderful mentor, uh, David Steinberg, through the Towns Helping Towns program. Um, any words of wisdom or recommendations for schools or municipalities who might be on the call who are also looking to get started on certification? Sure. Well, for one thing, call us. Like we're happy to talk to you. So and we can help you troubleshoot big problems and little problems. Um, and I would think the but the the best way to you know if you're just getting started, try to have a green team that's got some some local volunteers that are excited and willing to roll up their sleeves, as well as um, if you can, someone from the administration that you know, has enough authority that they can follow up on some of the things that will require the business administrator or the public works department to be involved. You don't want to be in a conversation where you're talking about all these things that you think you could get done, uh, but you're not including them in that conversation. Uh, and then I think working through the Sustainable Jersey Actions, um, just sort of, and we have a thing called, a, we've got like a spreadsheet that lists them out in an easy kind of format, and you can kind of have a meeting where you brainstorm which of those you think might make sense for your town um, and uh, identify the ones that you think are most feasible for you to do and the ones that you're most excited about and then just pick off those uh, and dig more deeply into those specific actions. Um, and then um, make sure you sign up for our listserv. We've got a great biweekly newsletter and we identify all kinds of resources for helping. So um, programs that you can join, like the ones I mentioned, um, where you know you can get grants, you can get technical assistance and help. 
And I think it's really important to um, for building your credibility in your community to focus on a few things where you can get a couple of wins. So if you do something successfully, um, your mayor and council, your neighbors and others will start to take you seriously and you'll get more credibility and capital for doing the next thing. Thanks, Randy. Uh, we have a question from the audience uh, from Gina. How can Tri-County sustainability members help support the legislation be, being considered for composting? That's a that's a great question. And I think, um, you yeah, know, I think they can. I mean, obviously, you can call your legislators and you can say, we want to see um, action. We want to see stronger, a stronger law. Um, and for a lot the laws that have already been passed, you can call the DEP, you know, and sort of nag them and say, you know, we want to see action. So, um, but again, I don't have a, uh, you know, I don't have a great answer for you on kind of what the current situation is right now and what you can do, but I, I will get that information and, and circle back. All right, uh, we have another question from the chat. Um, this one is, would Sustainable Jersey be okay with two or more towns collaborating on a grant? Absolutely, we encourage it. Awesome. Yeah, and, and that would be true for, you know, things like food waste collection, um, education campaigns, like collaboration can often be really effective. Perfect, that's great to hear. Um, so we have to stop there. Um, but keep your questions coming in the chat. Randy, thank you so much for all that you do and the team at Sustainable Jersey to do to support our towns. Uh, please come back and see us again soon. Awesome. Thank you. And thank I'll, I'll you. follow up with that information. Thank you, Randy. It's, I think it's really important for us to work together and have, a, a, you know, extra voices uh, talking to our legislators. So thank you for bringing us aware of that. Absolutely. Um, now we'd like to